Hi and welcome to another story and today we have part 5 of Sleepovers by Jacqueline Wilson, continuing from chapter 13. Chloe was so late I began to think she wasn't coming. My heart started thumping under my Twinkle Star t-shirt. My sleepover party would be just for four. Amy and Bella and Emily and me. Emily might be my best friend. I felt I was flying right up in the real stars. But then I came down to earth with a bump. There was a knock at the door. Chloe was here. Happy birthday, Daisy, she cooed, all smiles in front of her mum. My mum was still upstairs sorting out Lily. Chloe had a new t-shirt on too. It had sparkly pink lettering. It said, the bestest, the bestest little girl in the world. Chloe had pink sparkles on her cheeks and pink lipstick and pink strappy shoes with real heels. Her present was wrapped up in sparkly pink paper too. I opened it gingerly. I was expecting a parcel of anchovies, but it was a video. It had 101 Dalmatians on the cover. But a hundred and one doubts rushed around my head like little dogs. I didn't trust Chloe, not one bit. We went into the living room to play. Mum had tried to tidy up a bit, but Lily's special bouncy chair was still there. What a weird chair, said Chloe. It's my sister's, I said. But it's ginormous. She must be a huge baby. Chloe blew out her cheeks and waddled like a giant toddler. Where is she then? Has she crawled off somewhere? said Chloe, pretending to look under the table. She's uh, upstairs with my mum. She's putting her to bed because she got overexcited. Oh, poor little Baba. You'd better watch out, Daisy Diddums. You might get overexcited and get put to bed too, said Chloe. She paused. Well, what are we going to do then? I hadn't quite sorted it out. Let's dance, said Amy. But I didn't have the right sort of music. Yuck, this is all baby stuff or ancient, said Chloe, flipping through our CDs. Maybe we can have tea now, said Bella. But it was still a bit early for tea, and anyway, Mum was still upstairs with Lily. Shall we go out in the garden and play football, said Emily. So we went out in the garden, but nearly all the grass was taken up with the tent. Dad was just sorting out the last few tent pegs, hitting them in with a wooden mallet. Hi, girls, he said. Ooh, a tent, said Emily. I've always wanted to go camping, said Amy. Can we have campfire food, said Bella. We can't play football with that stupid tent there. Shame you've got such a little garden. Ah, it's Daisy's special friend Chloe, said Dad, giving her funny, her funny smile. Are you having fun, girls? Yes, said Emily politely. No, said Chloe. We don't know what to do, Dad, I said desperately. Ah, I think Mum was going to sort you girls out before tea, but she's still with Lily, is she? Tell you what, why don't you play party games? Party games? Like what, I said. Like boring, said Chloe. No, no, they're good fun, Dad insisted. Let's all go indoors and play. When Chloe turned to go, Dad mined hitting her over the head with his wooden mallet. Emily and Amy and Bella and I all fell about laughing. What's so funny, said Chloe crossly. Nothing. We're just having fun, I said. And we did have fun. Dad showed us how to play all these weird old-fashioned party games like Squeak Piggy Squeak. When Chloe was the pig, she sat on my lap so hard I squeaked for real, but I didn't care. Then we played stations, and I was Clapham Junction, and Emily was Vauxhall, and we had to keep swapping, and once we bumped into each other and got the giggles. Chloe was Waterloo, and she bumped into me on purpose and stamped on my toe, but I didn't care. Then we played Murder in the Dark, and I got a bit worried Chloe would be the murderer, and if she pretended to murder me, it might hurt rather a lot. Luckily, Bella was the murderer, and she just gave me a tiny poke in the tummy and whispered, Ever so sorry, but you're dead now, Daisy. Chloe kept pretending to trip over me all the time. I was the dead body, and each time she tripped, she kicked. I tried hard not to care. Dad saw one time and said, Hey, Chloe, don't kick Daisy like that. Chloe went red, as she's not used to being told off. I'm sick of playing this silly game. Let's do something else, she said. So we played musical bumps. It was great fun. Even Chloe cheered up and started jumping to the music, even if it was ancient. I wondered if it might start Lily off again, but Mum came down at last and muttered to Dad that she was fast asleep. So I'll fix tea, said Mum. Everyone loved my beautiful daisy cake. Mum even cut the sandwiches out with a special cutter, so they were daisy shaped too. We drank our lemonade out of green glasses and had little white iced buns and white chocolate clusters and green grape jelly and vanilla ice cream. I love the way it all matches, said Amy. It looks almost too lovely to eat, said Emily. Almost, said Bella, tucking in straight away. We all tucked in. We ate and ate until we were very nearly full. Then I had to cut my birthday cake ever so carefully. As the knife sliced through the thick icing and soft sponge and gooey jam, I made my birthday wish. I wish Emily could be my best friend, I whispered to myself. Then everyone sang happy birthday to you. When they got to happy birthday, dear Daisy, Chloe sang diddums Daisy, but I didn't care. 
The birthday cake was delicious. I hoped mum might make cakes more often. She washed all the daisy hair slides for us because some had got a bit sticky with icing and then she handed them out. There are four left over. Can I have them sing as I have the longest curliest hair, said Chloe. No, dear. These slides are for Lily, said mum. Daisy sister. Babies don't wear hair slides, said Chloe. I held my breath, but Bella asked if it would be terribly piggy if she had just one more slice of birthday cake. Dad laughed and offered her the whole plateful. I wouldn't do that. She'll eat it all, said Amy. And she doesn't ever feel sick, said Emily. You're just a greedy guts, Bella, said Chloe. You'll grow into a great big whale and never be able to wear decent clothes. Whales don't need clothes. They swim around and spout at silly little tadpoles like you, said Bella. She pretended to spout at Chloe, but she still had a large mouthful of cake. Chloe's bestest little girl in the whole wide world t-shirt got sprayed with crumbs. We all fell about laughing. Chloe didn't find it funny at all. You disgusting pig, Bella, she said, and she pushed her off the chair. Hey, hey, that's enough, said Mum. I think it's time you all got down from the table, Daisy. Daisy, run and find one of your t-shirts. Pop it so Chloe can wear it while I put her own in the washing machine. Chloe followed me up the stairs. Amy and Bella and Emily came too. I tiptoed past Lily's door. Why are you walking like that? Chloe asked. Shh, Lily's asleep, I whispered. Emily and Amy and Bella all started walking on tiptoe too. Chloe went stomp, stomp, clackety clump in her heeled shoes. But thank goodness Lily didn't stir in the room. Everyone squashed into my room. Goodness, isn't it weenie, said Chloe. No, it's not, said Bella. It's a lovely room, said Amy. It's the nicest room I've ever seen, said Emily. It's not. It is weenie. Lily has a proper sized bedroom because she's got so much stuff and mum sometimes sleeps on a camp bed beside her if she's having a bad spell. I have to make do with the tiny bedroom. But dad's put up special shelves on my wall with a roof on top, like a big open doll's house, so all my books and paints and stuff have different rooms. Mum's made me a duvet cover and curtains patterned with doll's houses, and on my windowsill I have my real doll's house. A very tiny family of teddy bears that live inside. Midnight is too big, but he sometimes likes to squeeze up really small and visit them. Doll's houses are for babies, said Chloe. No, they're not. My gran collects doll's houses, and she's an old lady, said Emily. I'm not really allowed to play with her doll's houses, though. You can play with mine, I said. <laughs> We're not playing baby doll games, said Chloe. Come on then, Daisy, show me all your t-shirts. I showed her my blue t-shirt with a dolphin, and my pink t-shirt with little flowers, and my black t-shirt with a silver mermaid, only the silver comes off, so she hasn't got a tail anymore. Is this all you've got, said Chloe. She chose the dolphin t-shirt, though she sneered at it and said it was stupid. She had a good look through all my clothes and didn't think much of any of them. And she was mean about my shoes too, because they come from the wrong shop. It wouldn't be soon, I wouldn't be seen dead in shoes like that, she said, throwing herself onto my bed and waggling her wonderful pink strappy heels in the air. Can I try your shoes on, Chloe, said Amy. Bella tried them on too, and even Emily. Can I try them on, Chloe, I asked. No fear, I don't want your smelly old feet in my shoes, said Chloe. I wished the dolphin on her t-shirt would swim off with her to the bottom of the sea and then leave her there with her head in the sand and her legs in the pink strappy shoes waving in the air. Chapter 14. When we went downstairs, Emily, Bella, Amy and me tiptoeing, Chloe clackety stomping, mum and dad were in the kitchen having their tea. Are you going to play some more musical bumps, said Amy. Boring, said Chloe. Are we going to have some more tea, said Bella. Boring, said Chloe. Are we going to go in the tent now, said Emily. Boring, said Chloe. What would you like to do then, Chloe, said Mum. It's Daisy's birthday. She should choose, said Dad. I know, Mum said quickly. Why don't you all go and watch the video Chloe gave Daisy for her birthday? 101 Dalmatians is a lovely film. We went into the living room. Chloe carefully shut the door behind us and then slotted the video into our player. We started to watch. It wasn't a lovely film. It wasn't 101 Dalmatians. It was another white witchy ghost movie. This one was even worse. It's about a girl walking in the country by herself. She keeps looking around anxiously and you hear these footsteps. And then there's this awful wailing breathing noise. A bit like Lily having one of her spells, but worse. So the girl starts to run and she sees this camping site and she runs harder and shouts, but then something grabs at her and you see her face and she screams and screams and screams. I had to suck my thumb hard to stop myself screaming too. Look at little sucker fun baby, said Chloe. She's scared of a silly film. I'm scared too, said Emily. And me, said Amy. Can't we do something else, like see if there's any cake left, said Bella. No, no, you've got to watch the bit that comes next. It's so cool, said Chloe. We were at the camping site now. 
The girl is inside her tent, just waking up and stretching, and then she sees something poking at her tent from the outside, and she laughs at first, thinking it's one of her friends. She even calls out to them, but there's no reply. There's just this awful waily noise, and then suddenly a terrible white claw rips through the tent, and I had to shut my eyes tight, and I nearly bit right through my thumb. Watch it, Daisy. Don't close your eyes, said Chloe. I, I don't want to watch it, said Bella. She doesn't have to watch it if she doesn't want to, said Amy. Shall we switch it off, said Emily, getting up. Sit down, Emily. You're all babies. Of course we're not switching it off, said Chloe. And then we heard my dad calling just outside, and Chloe shot up quick and stopped the video. A film on television flashed on instead, just in time. How are you doing, girls, said Dad, putting his head around the door. Are you okay, Daisy? Yes, Dad, I said. I thought you were watching 101 Dalmatians, said Dad, looking at the television. Oh, we were, but we just wanted to peek at the film on the telly too, said Chloe, in this cutesy pie to tone she uses for her own dad. My dad didn't look as if he totally believed her. He blinked at the television. Well, I don't think you should be watching this old film. I saw it years ago, and it goes a bit scary, said Dad. Compared to Chloe's white witchy ghost films, it was about as scary as the Teletubbies, but I was glad when Dad switched the television off. Even so. Anyway, I've come to announce that your sleeping quarters are now fully prepared, noble lady, said Dad in a daft voice, bowing low. He'd got it beautifully cosy inside the tent, with the big cushions from the sofa to sprawl on, and the special garden fairy lights rigged up inside the tent, so it glowed precious jewel colours, amber, emerald and ruby. There were lots of other old shawls and rugs, and cardies too, so that we were still ever so cosy when we were changed into our pyjamas. Then we talked and talked and talked, and talked, all about our favourite singers, I copied Emily, and footballers, I copied Emily again, and the boys in our class at school. I didn't need to copy because they're all gross. Then we made up our favourite clothes and this time I went first and invented this seriously cool black and silver outfit with high black high heels and Emily copied me because she said she liked the sound of mine so much. We chose our favourite colours, black and silver naturally, and our favourite an animal, favorite animals. Emily and I both said bears together and burst out laughing. Then we all said what we wanted to do when we grew up. Emily said she wanted to be a footballer and if she couldn't, she'd teach PE in school. And I said I wanted to be an artist, but if I couldn't, I'd teach art in a school. Chloe said I was a useless copycat, which wasn't fair because I've always loved art and I'm good at teaching too. I teach Lily lots, even though she doesn't learn very quickly. Chloe said teachers were boring anyway and she was going to be a famous actress. Amy said she was going to be a famous dancer and Bella said she was going to be a famous TV chef. Then, she said she felt a little bit peckish, and at that exact moment Mum came out with big mugs of hot chocolate and a hot black currant for Emily and a bowl of popcorn. Wow, this is the best sleepover party ever, said Bella, even better than mine. It's nowhere near as good as mine, said Chloe. We've all had super sleepovers, said Emily, but yours is just great, Daisy, and she reached for my hand under the rug and gave it a squeeze. While we sipped our drinks and munched popcorn, we swapped our most embarrassing moments. I'm not going to tell you. And we laughed so much the bowl tipped over and we had to play hunt the popcorn in our sleeping bags. Then we played double dare and some of the dares were amazingly outrageous. I'm not going to tell you again, though I will just say that one of us took her pyjamas off and went into the garden and ran around the tent, but it was dark by then so no one could see, I hope. Then we started to tell ghost stories and that was fun at first, but Chloe started to get a bit too scary. Do shut up, Chloe, Emily begged, putting her hands over her ears. Don't be stupid. It's just a story. Ghosts aren't real, said Chloe. Yes, they are. My granny kept seeing the ghost of my granddad after he died, said Amy. Let's play ghost, said Bella, and she pulled the white pillowcase of her pillow and put it over her head and made funny woo ghost noises. Then she went ooh instead because she'd found some more popcorn inside the pillowcase and went gobble gobble munch munch. You are a piglet, Bella, said Amy. So Bella made piglet noises and then we all played a daft game of farmyard and got the giggles so badly our tummies hurt. Then we sang all the songs we knew and then we played making up a poem together. I started. We are the special alphabet girls. Some of us have straight hair and some of us have curls, said Emily. We all like to dance if we get the chance, said Amy. We eat lots of chocolate. Yum, 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 said Bella. Chloe and Emily, Amy and Bella and Daisy Diddledum's fat bum, said Chloe. Daisy isn't a bit, bit fat, said Emily. I am, but I don't care, said Bella. Daisy, do you think your mum might have some more popcorn in the kitchen? I think my mum and dad have gone to bed now, but tell you what, we have got my birthday chocolates. I handed around the box. Emily said she was far too full up to have even half a chocolate. Amy took one. 
Chloe chose the special caramel and hazelnut, my favourite. Bella took one, and then another, and then another. And then even she said sleepily that she was almost full up. We were all starting to feel very, very sleepy. Bella fell so soundly asleep, she started to snore a little bit, and we all got the giggles. Then Amy curled up and went quiet. After a long time, Chloe dropped off too. Emily and I whispered very, very quietly together. I decided to close my eyes just for a minute, and then I was suddenly asleep too. I woke up with a start. I heard this rustling nearby. Then something grabbed hold of my shoulder. The white witchy ghost was coming to get me. Help, I gasped. Shut up, stupid. It was only Chloe wriggling right out of her sleeping bag. What are you doing, Chloe? It's still the middle of the night. I know. I need to go to the loo. You'll have to show me where it is. It's upstairs. Mum left the back door ajar so we'd be able to nip in. I won't be able to find it in the dark, said Chloe, shaking me. You'll have to come with me. Oh, I'm so sleepy, Chloe, I said. Then a thought occurred to me that that made me wake up properly. Hey, you're not scared of the dark, are you? Of course not, idiot, said Chloe. But when we crept out of the tent into the black, gar into the black garden, a cat suddenly yowled and we both squealed and clutched each other. We trekked through the wet grass in our bare feet. We were still holding hands. You're shaking, Chloe, I whispered. It's, it's cold, Chloe hissed. It was cold, but it was also scary. I knew it was only my scruffy old garden when I played every day, but in the dark it went wild and woody and I didn't like it one bit. I also felt distinctly weird holding Chloe's hand. As soon as we got in the house, we drew apart abruptly. Put the light on now, said Chloe. But it'll wake up Mum and Dad, I said. I really meant it'd wake up Lily. I shushed Chloe and hoped she'd go, quiet, go, go quietly. At least she wasn't wearing her clackety stomp high heels. But Lily was awake already. She obviously felt it was morning now. She heard Chloe and me padding across the dark landing towards the loo. And she felt indignant. She wanted to get up too. Ah, 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 Lily wailed. Ah, Chloe screamed. It's the witch ghost. What on earth, said Mum, stumbling out of her bedroom. She switched on the landing light. Chloe was crying and it wasn't and it wasn't just her face that was damp. She'd wet herself. She gave her a little squeak and hurtled into the bathroom sharpish. Oh dear, said Mum. Poor little thing. Look, you see, if you can quiet and Lily down while I go and find a spare pair of pyjamas for Chloe. You keep out of the way. Daisy, I expect she'll be a bit embarrassed. I'll say, I muttered. I went into Lily's room. Uh, 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 said Lily. That's right, Lily. You're the greatest. You really frightened her. You're the cleverest sister in the whole wide world. Chapter 15. I went back to the tent, but Chloe didn't. When I woke up in the morning, she still wasn't there. Where's Chloe? said Emily, leaning up on one elbow. Maybe the witchy ghost has got her, said Amy, rubbing her eyes. I wish, said Bella. She smacked her lips. Is it breakfast time? Mum was pouring juice and laying out bowls of cereal in, the cereal in the kitchen. Dad was eating a banana and looking sleepy. Lily was strapped in her special chair. She sang, <laughs> quietly to herself. There was no sign of Chloe. Did Chloe sleep in my bedroom after all? I said. After what? what? What happened, Daisy? Tell us. Now, now, said Mum. You don't want to tell tales, Daisy. Chloe decided she wanted to go home and her dad, again, so Dad drove her back. In the middle of the night, said Dad. She went all sad and sulky after she wet herself. Dad, said Mum. Oops, said Dad. She wet herself, said Amy. Chloe wet herself, said Emily. And she calls us baby, said Bella. We had a wonderful time for the rest of the morning, all five of us. Lily kind of joined in too. Amy gave her a drink of milk and Emily fed her some special cereal and Bella crumbled chocolate into very tiny, tiny pieces and spooned them into Lily's mouth. Lily liked all this attention. She particularly liked the chocolate and went, uh, 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 smacking her lips. There, I knew she'd like chocolate, said Bella. Then we all watched tele television for a bit, and then we played this mad game of charades. Lily played a baby and an old, old lady, and we let her be a ghost again, too, as she was so very good at it. Then Amy's mum came calling for her, then Bella's dad, and then for a very special half hour, it was just Emily and me and Lily. Emily and I rather wanted to play teddy bears, but that was right out of the question, so we played hairdressers instead. I styled Emily's hair, and she styled mine, and then we both styled Lily's hair. I did one side and Emily did the other, plaiting it carefully and arranging her daisy slides. Lily wasn't too sure about this at first, but then she got into the swing of it and said, ah, 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 very happily. Oh, li oh, Lily, you look lovely, said Mum, and she looked uh, like she was going to cry. You look utterly gorgeous, little Lily, said Dad, pretending to bow to her. He put his arm around Emily and me, and you two look ultra fantastic too. Emily and I beamed, and then her mum came to collect her. Emily gave me a special big hug and said it had been the best sleepover ever, ever, ever. 
And then she paused. I'm going to break friends with Chloe, Daisy, somehow. So will you be my new best friend? Oh, yes, please, Emily. I I'd like that more than anything, I said. I was so happy. But I was also a tiny bit scared, too, wondering what Chloe would say, worrying what Chloe would do. But you'll never ever guess what. We didn't have to break friends with Chloe. She broke friends with us. When I got to school on Monday morning, Chloe was telling a whole gang of girls she'd been to the worst sleepover party in the world on Saturday. Daisy's house is all little and pokey, and there's no room anywhere, and she's got this totally batty, loopy, maniac baby sister who screams all the time. Chloe screwed up her face into a mad leer and wailed. Some of the girls laughed. I clenched my fists. You shut up, Chloe. My sister isn't mad. She's got learning difficulties, that's all. She isn't Daisy's baby sister. She's her big sister. I like her a lot, said Emily. She's special because she's got special needs, said Amy. With sad, because she can't do much, but she can still eat chocolate, said Bella. Why are you all sticking up for Daisy Diddums and her loopy baby sister, said Chloe, scowling. They're not the babies. You are, said Emily. Chloe paused. She went red and realised we all knew about her little accident. She waited, wondering if we were actually going to come out with it in front of everyone. We waited too. You're not my best friend anymore, Emily. You're not my friends either. Amy and Bella. And I wouldn't have you for a friend even if you were the last girl in the world, Daisy Diddums, said Chloe. And she turned her back on us and went off with this new gang of girls. It was so wonderful. So now Emily and I are best friends. And Amy and Bella are best friends. And we all go around in a special foursome at school. Chloe doesn't look as if she likes it, but there's nothing she can do about it. She knows we could still tell on her. It's all because of Lily. She's the best sister ever. And that is the end of Sleepovers by Jacqueline Wilson. Really hope you enjoyed that story, guys. I will be back soon with lots more coming on my channel. Lots of stories coming your way. Lots of videos. And if you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Goodbye. I will be back soon with the next part of uh, Jack and, uh, James and the Giant Peach. And also coming your way is Slime by David Williams. That'll be coming very, very soon. If you'd like to subscribe, as I say, that's always appreciated. Hope you're well, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.